It's Monday Heart So High. I'm Ashlyn Gall. And I'm NJ. On today's show, we are going to talk about tonight's college football national title game, the start of the new semester, and more. This is RFTV. take on the LSU Tigers for the college football national title. Here is Sydney Easters and Bell Elsesser with an in-depth preview of tonight's game. Welcome back to RFTV Sports Center. Today we will be giving a preview on the national championship. LSU defeated Oklahoma 63-28. Clemson defeated Ohio State 29-23. Both teams are 14-0. Clemson is trying to improve to 15-0 for the second time in a row. LSU is trying to win another national championship since their last one in 2007. The quarterback matchup between Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence will be an important factor in the game. Heisman winner Joe Burrow is a dual threat quarterback with a good arm and fast feet. He is praised for his ability to escape pressure, manage the game, and keep plays alive. Don't forget about Trevor Lawrence though. Trevor has been 29-0 as a starting quarterback at Clemson and he has been in the playoffs before. He played in the national championship last year where he thrived against arguably one of the best defenses in the nation. Trevor has also improved his running game. In the game against Ohio State, Trevor ran for 67 yards to score a touchdown. Although the quarterback matchup may be the main focus, the defense will also be super important. Clemson's defense has done extremely well in the red zone this year. In the game versus Ohio State, Clemson's defense held Ohio State to three field goals as opposed to three touchdowns. The key for Clemson is to apply pressure that will get Joe Burrow on the ground. LSU is famous for making good defensive backs and safeties. It will be an interesting matchup between the LSU defense and Clemson's offense. Turnovers will be necessary for both teams as the game is a fairly even matchup. That's all for RFTV Sports Center today. Enjoy the game and go, go Tigers. Tigers! I soon Lamp brings us her final savvy student of the year. Automatic vehicles are everywhere. Even electric cars are on the rise with increase in environmental awareness, but manual cars are still prevalent. Today on Savvy Student, we will explore differences between automatic and manual transmission vehicles. First, let's discuss the basic mechanics. To understand the vast differences between a manual and automatic vehicle, we need to discuss transmission. The transmission changes the vehicle's drive wheel speed and the torque in relation to the engine speed and torque. With the knowledge of the purpose of the transmission inside of a vehicle, let's discuss the implications of this for the driver. The first thing you may notice when entering a manual transmission car is that there are three pedals. The pedal furthest to the left is called the clutch. Basically, what the clutch does is enable the driver to switch between the gears of the vehicle, or transitioning the torque from the engine to the drivetrain. The manual transmission is controlled by the driver, it may be harder to operate a manual car, but there are some major benefits. Manual cars are usually cheaper than automatic. There are less complex inner workings, therefore less maintenance to worry about. And there is more efficient gas mileage. An automatic transmission run vehicle uses a computerized system to shift between gears. The process is more complicated than the manual car. Therefore, automatic transmission tends to be more pricey. On the other hand, Automatic transmission is more user-friendly, and you don't have to worry about potentially killing the engine if you forget to put your foot on the clutch when you're coming to a stop. Now that you have some more knowledge about automatic and manual transmissions, it's up to you to decide which one you prefer. And until next time. Basketball Cheer has been revamped this year. I will bring you more information. I'm Ashley Golf, and I'm going to interview Coach Harrison about this year's Basketball Cheer season. Hartsville High School basketball cheer has just started up this winter and we are at the beginning of the region play so we have a lot of games back to back and we have some games that we really need to win so we need a lot of fan participation so we look forward to cheering on the Red Foxes. <laughs> I 
I just chose our captains for the 2019-2020 season. We have a senior, Jasmine Lynch, and three sophomores who have proven themselves to be excellent leaders on and off the floor. Jordan, Logan, and Ja'Kayla have often have shown that they can be great leaders. I have the varsity squad consisting of ninth or 12th graders, and we really look for the best cheerleaders at Hartsville High to be a part of the basketball program. So um, with that said, uh, we've competed in our first competitive um, Stomp and Shake program, which was in December, where we claimed first place. <laughs> We look forward to additional competitions this year. With that being said, we have a conditioning beginning for all tier at Hartsville High School. That'll be um, varsity and JV football tier, competitive tier, and basketball tier going forward for 2020-2021. All right, come today to conditioning. Um, we'll start in Ulmer, and we'll get started with our miles. So we look forward to seeing you at 4 o'clock. Uh, look for me or Coach Ingles. We're ready to work. And it will start with Mal. And we'll start um, on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. So if you need a schedule for conditioning or you know someone at the middle school who's interested in cheering, or if you have never cheered before, you're welcome to come to conditioning. We will condition all together, and we will try out together on April the 10th. Um, and we look forward to having all of you there. We need more faces, new faces, young faces, old faces to represent Hartsville High School. Now back to the host. Finally, here is Taylor Green with information you need to know about the new semester. The new semester begins this Friday, which means new classes for many of you. This Friday, all students will report to normal advisor at the morning bell. Morning DCIT will also report here at school at 8 a.m. to get their new schedule. Once advisory is over, you will report to first block or back to DCIT. Since we have advisory in the morning, we will not report to advisory at 11. Your teachers can assist you with this schedule. Any junior or senior with a 3.0 GPA interested in taking a college class here at school should see their school counselor. It is also the last call for dance classes for next semester. All students are able to take these classes and it will be offered during second and third period. Counselors will see students with a class schedule error such as an open block or an overlapping class. You will not be able to change your schedule due to a teacher or a lunchtime. Once classes are distributed Friday, you will only have 10 days to level up or down in a class. Let's make this semester better than the last. I'm Taylor reporting for RFTV. Back to the anchors. Thanks for tuning in and stay foxy, Hartsville High.